From across time and space and throughout the multiverse, listen as two generations of comic book readers come together to discuss a single character or event that shaped pop culture as we know it. Let Your Geek Side Show presents Then and Now with Susan and Kitty. Hi, everyone. I'm Susan. And I'm Kitty. And we have our work cut out for us today. We've got to span one podcast to cover 80 years of DC Comics history, because that's how long this character has been around. Oh, no problem. Yeah, you know, whatever. <laughs> so unless we dis- discover that we have superpowers that allow us to talk faster than a speeding bullet, we probably won't be able to even scratch the surface of Superman's history. And our Then and Now podcast today is all about the Man of Steel himself, Superman. So we're going to kind of cover our our versions of the history for me and and the modern age of Superman from about 2015 to the current moment. That's awesome. So we're going to do our best to cover it. But like I said, this is not even scratching the surface of. But, you know, to be fair, Superman's powers are enhanced by Earth's yellow sun. So we can't scratch him anyway. <laughs> so this whole thing works out. And we're going to do our best to give you um, kind of the overall themes of Superman that have changed over the years. So let's cut to the action. I can't believe I'm reading. Action comics, that is. Kitty decided I should say that. But for for the time being, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman, Superman then, then and now. now. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I can't resist. It's it's so much fun because Superman has a lot of fun catchphrases. He has so many catchphrases. And that's something that from his beginnings to now he's always kind of had that as like a thing that he does which Mm -hmm. makes sense because he was invented in what the late 30s yeah yeah so of course they had to like grab your attention with some sort of catchphrase or something like cool and kitschy that he would do now i know that i'm in charge of the then that's like my thing on this (laughs) podcast however I was not born until Superman was well into his 60s. (laughs) So um, I'm kind of covering what people or my generation, people like in their mid 30s and older would think of as like their childhood nostalgia versions of Superman. Um, So that's where I'm coming from in terms of my then. I apologize for, you know, the majority of Superman's history that I won't be touching, but the Golden Age, the Silver Age, the Bronze Age, like they're all fantastic. And Superman has been such a staple in in comics, especially DC Comics, since his beginning. And... And that just leaves us room to cover more in more podcasts. Yes, exactly. (laughs) Like, um, we have a friend named Tim who is a big Superman fan, and I asked him if I was going to talk about some some Superman comics, what he would talk about, because obviously when you're researching something like this, a character with such a legacy, you have to, you can't assume that you, that your experience is everyone's experience. And Tim sent me a list of about 25 titles, <laughs> and I have time for three. <laughs> Um, luckily, the three that I had chosen were all on Tim's list. Excellent. So that made me feel really happy. And for me, I'll be the first to admit that the idea of Superman that I have in my head is largely informed by that kind of classic Americana icon um, that that you see. And it is kind of the catchphrases and, and the colors and the superheroic Superman. But a lot of the more finessed knowledge I have on him is... One, through the lens of the Supergirl television show uh, and looking up the characters that come from that and like the Black Mercy and Mixus Bidelic and all these different things that I know are the part Black of- Black Mercy's in the Supergirl television show? Yeah. I've never watched an episode, but- And the I, episode really? is called For the Girl Who Has Everything. It was, it was really? really cool. It was oh, really cool. wow. That's really cool. But so I see that and I go and, and I watch the show with my father who- he grew up reading kind of probably some of the classic stuff that would be on. So Tim's really, list we and- need your dad to come in <laughs> to do like double then, <laughs> like more than, <laughs> more than and now. Yeah, yeah, no, and and he would say, "Hey, I remember picking up that comic when I was a kid and and trading in recycling cans and getting that issue." Or or he loved the Lois Lane comics and the and That's the Jimmy great. Olsen stuff. So I know from where he would say, "I know who that is." 
but this is a new take on it and I would go and look it up. Um, and I think the most recent real encounter I've had with Superman in the comics was when I got my comic book store job in about 2015 on the heels of uh, the end of the new 52 to Convergence and then what came forward from that for DC. What a strange time to pick up Superman. Yes. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, um, I picked up Superman at a strange time as well because my knowledge of Superman comes from the like early 90s and then mm. like into the 2000s. In fact, like most of the comics that I'm going to talk about today are from like the late 90s, early 2000s. So you didn't quite have like mullet Superman? That was no, like 80s, right? No, I did 80s, not. Right? That was very 80s. <laughs> I came into Superman around the time of the death and return of Superman, oh, okay. which was like the ninth, like classic 90s superman <laughs> yeah that's and that's a sh that's a series that gets or a story that gets homaged a lot in in current superman literature it so. absolutely is and i don't think that we can talk about superman moving forward without acknowledging like how brilliant that storyline was because in it's when it was coming out in issue form, it was just something that I read as a kid. I kind of didn't understand the weight of everything that was happening because mm -hmm. I was saying before this podcast started that like when I first started reading comics, everything was just grab as many comics as I could and then it, like, <laughs> absorb them as a much good as I philosophy. could. Yeah, and absorb them as quickly as I could. So for me, the death and return of Superman, I didn't understand really what I was reading when I read it. But going back to it to like, you really, really see how that turned Superman's storyline um, moving forward and like what he represented. So that was a pretty cool way to come into Superman himself. Something that we always, so now I started looking for these things that like these staples, these like tent poles or like pillars of what a character is is like is made of like the stuff that they come from and something that I never thought of Superman as before but in going backwards and researching this podcast and revisiting some of these um you know these stories that I had as a kid Superman is about choice and so is like anybody from Krypton if you I mean you are more familiar with Supergirl than mm -hmm. I am for sure but Superman isn't always perfect <laughs> in spite of what we see him as the symbol the s the the human who is enhanced by earth's yellow sun and is invulnerable to everything except kryptonite he's not perfect he has the same flaws as most of us as any of us he could be in any man like <laughs> if you think about it that way yeah i i mean i'm i'm a huge fan of when stories get the opportunity to not knock down their heroes, but to challenge them and say, like, hey, we we think he is truth, justice in the American way and that he can do no wrong or he always knows what, like, oh, my God, if a hero always knew what to do, then no. they would put everyone else out of business. Absolutely. And one of the storylines I wanted to talk about was All-Star Superman, Ooh. which is such, I think, personally... And forgive me, again, this is my opinion. I think it's the best Superman story that I've ever read. And if I'm not correct here, please comment with other Superman stories that you think I should read that are better. But All-Star Superman by Grant Morrison, pencils by Frank Quitely, is by far one of the, or in my opinion, the best version of the choice the truth justice in the American way, but the like fallibility of the character because this is when Superman, his powers are overly enhanced to the point where he is going to die and he has a year left to live and what do you do with that year? What do you do with that time? How many people do you, can you help? And what happens when you can't help everybody that you want to help? Oh, wow. <laughs> it's so heart-wrenching and like I'm trying not to cry talking about it because it is it's so like how do you express to someone how much you love them because he has to do that with Lois he has to make Lois believe him he has to address his rivalry with Luther because that's the biggest rivalry in his life he tries to talk to Luther as Clark Kent being like honest like trying to come down to a human level and it's something that honestly I'm gonna steal this from Kill Bill but like Clark Kent is the disguise, you know? So he's disguised himself with Clark Kent. He's talking to Luther, telling him 
that he knows that Superman is dying and trying to level with him as a person. But Luther obviously goes bigger and bigger and bigger. And Superman has to take out Luther, but in doing so transfers to Luther in the most beautiful way, the way he sees the world. And right before Luther dies in this comic series, like Luther for a moment gets to see the world the way Superman does. And it's so beautiful that I'm not going to cry, <laughs> I've got but I want to. <laughs> I know you should read it, but it's so it's so perfect. And to me, that's the ultimate. That's the ultimate version of Superman. Like he knows all these bad things exist, and he needs to fix them, but he can't fix all of them. Mm-hmm. So how do you choose? How do you go back? And how do you choose? He's not perfect. He can't fix everything. Wow. And and so. Jumping off of that, that's really interesting because I've I've never read All Star Superman, but that kind of that thread kind of comes up in the final days of Superman, which was a series that to me almost felt like um, DC Comics doing some housekeeping because they had several different versions of Superman running around in continuity, and so they had to uh, a lot of of the modern stuff from Convergence to the final days of Superman to DC Rebirth and uh, on to Action Comics 1000. Which is coming up, by the way. Yeah, coming up. Uh, Bendis just turned in the script this week. So That's amazing. <laughs> so while we're recording this, Bendis has turned in the script. Woo! Um, but DC wanted to get back to a Superman that fans enjoyed and and coming off of the heels of New 52, it was, okay, who's going to be our Superman? What's... What's he going to represent in this new wave of our comics? Um, so in Final Days of Superman, there were at least two, possibly three running around. Um, but because there was there was yeah, an yeah. evil one. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, no, I know. It's sometimes with like Earth One, Superman Prime, Earth, like all yes. that stuff. Like the, yes. it's hard to keep track. And, and for <laughs> someone who hasn't followed all of that, I was like, oh, my goodness. Like I, I get the multiverse theory. But... Uh, this was the intersection of Prime Earth Superman, who I believe is the new 52 one at that time, and the pre-Flashpoint Superman. Okay. Um, okay. Yes. Okay. And the pre-Flashpoint Superman, he kind of considers himself a little more human than Superman. And the, the Prime Earth uh, Superman is the one who's dying um, from he'd had his powers taken away, brought back. He had overexposure to... I think kryptonite as well. I mean, there was a whole, there was a whole lot going on, and I've I apologize. I haven't read this as it's fine. It's probably also confusing to listen to, <laughs> being like Prime and uh, no, we get it. But but it was an intersection of two different Supermen. The New Fifty Two version, which was what had existed since I think two thousand eleven, two thousand two thousand eleven, mm-hmm. and then the the pre-Flashpoint before the New 52, and it was kind of DC bringing them together on the same page and also pitting them against someone who had Superman-like powers um, but was using them for evil. Mm-hmm. And it was it was kind of their moment of truth of which Superman's going to be our Superman going forward. And That's interesting. I, it's interesting because I read a little bit of the New 52 Superman, and obviously I'm familiar with uh, pre-Flashpoint Superman. Mm-hmm. So I'm curious as to like what their – what exactly their conflict was besides trunks. Because, <laughs> um, no, what I mean is when we're talking about Superman, the through line of him is, you know, we keep coming back to truth, justice in the American way. Mm-hmm. So what do they have to fight about? Like, I'm genuinely asking. <laughs> what do, who, who has? Superman and Superman. What do they have oh. to fight about? Well, Superman and Superman were on the same side against Superman. No. Um, oh, so, Jesus. So the, so... <laughs> We have the dying Superman yes. and we've got the pre-Flashpoint and they're coming together to to combat someone who's using the Superman powers for evil. Oh, he I was, see. He was kind of a more mysterious. He, okay. he wasn't really Superman, but he claimed to be the one true Superman. And so that was one of that was one of DC's threads. Like what what makes the true Superman? And that's not even something they resolved until well into Rebirth. Um but but like you said with All-Star Superman, uh there's some cool moments of the Prime Earth Superman getting to interact with some members of the Justice League and namely the Trinity for the last time. And there were there were some cool moments with um with Batman even getting kind of emotional. There's there's a a kind of a wordless scene where Clark has left and and has explained to Batman that 
here's what's happening. I'm dying of radiation poisoning and we need to stop this one threat to make sure that he doesn't kind of take over as Superman. And so he leaves and uh, Batman's in the Batcave alone and he has a moment of silence and then he punches through a monitor and Alfred's watching him, but they don't exchange any words. And you kind of see how much like Bruce Wayne is affected by the fact that they Superman. need each other. Yeah. <laughs> it's so crazy because one of my other Superman threads that I want to talk about is Kingdom Come uh, by Mark Wade, drawn by Alex Ross and the most probably one of the most perfect comics that could ever <laughs> possibly exist. But the Batman Superman relationship is super important in Kingdom Come, even though this is an Elseworld story, so it doesn't take place in the normal type of DC continuity. But having those two work together they need each other. You need the darkness and the light. Like, yes, they're both always fighting on the same side, but what is one without the other? Superman can do things that Batman can't and vice versa. There's no way that Superman will ever go as dark as Bruce and Bruce can't come into the sun the way Superman can, like quite literally. <laughs> so it's, it's, kind of beautiful to have Batman be affected that way by him when he's spent a lot of time like even Batman has like he keeps kryptonite on him as like a contingency plan because he thinks that it's possible that someone as powerful as Superman could like what happens if he goes bad mm -hmm. that's always something in the back of Batman's mind but the thing is about Superman is he always makes a choice and it's it. I can't see Superman ever making that choice unless we're talking clones and blah, you know, like, <laughs> like clones and parallel worlds and multiverses and, and bizarros and, and bizarros, but like bizarro is not Superman. Like it's just so interesting when you have, and then kingdom come, like I mentioned, has that other question of what happens when the powerful are too powerful. What happens when superheroes have no rules? Because the whole thing starts mm. with this brand new meta into like in their world who murders the Joker. So like what mm. happens when when something like that goes too far? So they have this whole group of vigilantes. So it's almost superheroes versus superheroes, but with different codes. Mm. And what happens is Luther winds up controlling uh, Captain Marvel or Shazam, whatever you want to call him, because it gets confusing. And at a certain point, Superman is able to get a hold of Shazam, turn him back into Billy and ask him the question, what do you want to do? Like, do you want there's a choice? There's I'm not going to give too much away in case you all want to go read Kingdom Come. But there is a choice. And he asks him, what do you want to do? And. So it comes back to me. So for me, what I always look for with Superman are those choices. So not only does he have to make them himself, but he's able to ask people in his life the hard questions to help them move forward for truth, justice in the American way. Mm -hmm. So it's not just something he imposes on himself. It's something that he will ask of others around him. And it's up to them to make that choice as well. Hmm. <laughs> I it it's interesting seeing the choice come up again like also just whether whether or not he wants to be that that hero that represents all the things that people see and think of when they see the symbol of the house of L and the trunks and the cape and the blue just everything because convergence set the stage for the final days of superman in which you had the two supermen and it was what are we going to be going forward but convergence set up the fact that you had a superman who didn't really think that was his mo anymore um he was he was much more accustomed to human life not accustomed but he he thought of himself more as human because of how he was raised and um in his relationship with Lois Lane and he didn't really quite want to step up. Um, Convergence was an eight issue miniseries in 2015 um, where Brainiac collected cities from across the timelines and then kind of put them in a outside of time and space kind of area. So that's how we, we got a lot of the free, the pre flashpoint characters back in. I read certain books in Convergence just to see some of the old characters come back that way. And I, I really liked, some of those titles yeah they were I, so good i heard great things about a lot of them and, and the way they shipped out was really interesting because they kind of had weeks where certain characters would it, it was a whole 
uh, shipping situation. It's one with- of those things that I know it's controversial, but I enjoyed Convergence as a whole as a mm-hmm. fan of DC. So I, I recommend picking up if you if you like particular DC characters, picking up Convergence just to see kind of the evolution and kind of what we talk about here on this podcast, the then and the now. Yeah. And and so that was a really cool event. But taking those threads once the final days of Superman happened and we get to rebirth, we're left with the pre-flashpoint Superman who still kind of, he recognizes that, because he's on the prime Earth now, Mm -hmm. and prime Earth Superman has died, and the Justice League is mourning him, and Lena Lang is mourning him, and and he's kind of like, hey, I'm I'm not this Earth's Superman, so I'm going to step back. And, I'm, and he has a child with Lois Lane. He has uh, Jonathan Samuel Kent, named after both of their fathers. Um, and and so he's he's like, this isn't – I'm not this or Superman. I don't quite know what to do. Um, he still has his abilities. And it it was interesting just because it, it felt like such a shift from the New 52 um, based on – I haven't read all the New 52. So – but from what the sentiment was, from what I heard of – people in the stores buying these books. It feels like he, Rebirth brought the human element back to Superman because that's something Superman is, he might be Kryptonian like by his, you know, genes and mm-hmm. his, um, like his blood, but he never knew that planet. He knew Earth and mm-hmm. that's why he's he's of two worlds. So. And, and you can hold him up as as like a paragon, but to say that he's alien and he's not like us. You don't want to put that distance between yourself and Superman because, he, yeah, he was raised on Earth and and elements of his humanity and what he fights for are things that we should also aspire to to hold as our own morals. Like, you don't have to have Kryptonian powers to... Absolutely. I think that that's something that's really important when talking about Superman is to, you know, address the fact that he is of two worlds. He... Um, he does, he does inspire. Mm-hmm. That's what we look to is that symbol. Mm-hmm. And and so at some point through the rebirth process, he does see how much this this Earth misses their Superman, and he makes the choice. He says, "I I will be the new Superman because because I am a Superman." And then through some shenanigans with Mixus Spitalik, you do find that he was only half of the real Superman, and it was. DC's choice kind of to bring the the prime earth superman back into um combining with the pre flashpoint to establish that that one idea of superman so they they that's interesting cuz they joined together and so what they're saying is and this is kind of this is absolutely true and kind of the point of superman moving forward is you can't have one without the other you can't have an all powerful crazy godlike superman but you also can't just have a farm boy who idealizes humans more than he does his own powers you have to have the guy who's willing to step up and be the symbol yeah, and I think that's par- partially what we all love about Superman. And in in so doing through Rebirth, which I uh, the over, the response to Rebirth as a whole initiative was overwhelmingly positive and and really cool to see. But that Superman moment reconciled the two timelines that a lot of people were like, "Well, you have you you pick one. Do you like this one or do you like the other one?" It, they can't both be Superman, but it reconciled two timelines for DC and for the fans and kind of gave some added complexities to Superman moving forward because now writers can play with the dual aspects of of the Superman who oh my god it, it sounds crazy as I'm talking I'm like I know and and I'm probably missing some prime earth one two numbers I wouldn't in here, even but, worry about it <laughs> but but it's cool because DC also didn't destroy any of that past they said hey we recognize there are multiple versions that we have had over the years and here's what we're choosing to bring forward into so in a lot of ways dc made a similar choice to superman yes they decided to step up and be that hero for prime earth which is our own earth and and that's going because rebirth brought back uh numbering mm-hmm. for for a lot mm-hmm. of these titles yep and then they started double shipping books and so we're coming up on a major superman milestone in that's april crazy action comics number one thousand and that's where we're talking about the 80 years of comics that come 
to Action Comics 1000. Yeah. Oh, my God. Have, I've been seeing all the variant covers they've been putting out for that because they've got they've gotten like all the artists yeah, who've ever done, who've ever done Superman ever. Who are still around. <laughs> yes, but, obviously. But, they should do like retro throwback covers, like reprintings oh. of old artists as well. Just, just a little idea, DC. <laughs> <laughs> but that's going to be huge. And what I'm fascinated with and and obviously I can't speak to it yet because the issue's not out, but the script is in. Brian Michael Bendis made the 17-year jump from Marvel to DC to do Superman. If you're going to make the jump, yeah. Superman 1000 is the jump that you make. Yeah, and so he's so he's doing a backup story in 1000, mm-hmm. and then they're giving him a miniseries called Man of Steel, and that's kind of going to set the stage for what he's bringing to Superman. And then 1001, he's in full time. He's... He's doing Superman. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, And the red trunks are back. (laughs) (laughs) Gotta say that. So for fans looking to catch up on Clark Kent and his comic book history, I recommend going to Absolute All-Star Superman. That is a collection of all 12 issues of All-Star Superman. You can get them in three collected versions, but I recommend getting the very pretty collected Absolute All-Star Superman. I would also recommend getting Kingdom Come by Mark Wade art by Alex Ross. And I didn't get time to touch on this, but Birthright as well, that is also written by Mark Wade with art by Lenel Francis Yu. It's a gorgeous story and kind of is a retelling of Superman's origin that they redid and then decided it was canon afterwards because it was so, it was, it's exactly what we're talking about. It's <laughs> the combining of the Smallville human past with also the Kryptonian blood and the coming forward and stepping up and becoming Superman. So those would be my recommendations for the then side and for the modern stuff. If you're looking for Superman now on the now side of things, um, I would definitely recommend starting with Convergence. It's kind of it's kind of a clean starting point so that you don't have to go back into the new 52 because um, I can't speak to it, so I can't recommend it. Um, but, you can start with Convergence. Well, I'm <laughs> Convergence sets the stage for the final days of Superman because it introduces the pre-flashpoint. Um, so I would recommend picking up Convergence, uh, final days of Superman, and then the the Rebirth stuff. There's actually quite a few volumes right now. That's awesome. Um, yeah, and then keep an eye out for what's next. Yeah, There's- Action Comics number one thousand hits comic book stores on April eighteenth. So that's coming up. Oh, my gosh. I, and again, I feel Put like pre-orders in people. Right? Like, seriously. Like, fill out your previews. Get it in your poll. Get it in your file. And like support your local comic shops right now because you can pre-order it. So um, leap to your local comic book store in a single bound is what oh my I gosh. said in the script. I'm that's sorry. It's another one, of those, another one of those really fun catchphrases. There you go. <laughs> um, but again, we haven't even scratched the surface of Superman. So I imagine we'll be coming back to him at this podcast at some other point. Maybe, Maybe we can have some special guests who help us Possibly <laughs> have some special guests. But also moving forward, you're going to have the new leg of action comics to be talking about. I can go backwards and read some more really old Superman stuff because that's classic and really fun to read. So check out one of these many Superman stories. Go to your local comic book store and support them. And that's that's Superman Superman then then and now. Thank you guys for listening. And don't forget to let your geek side show. This has been Then and Now. For more ad-free pop culture news and content, visit geeksideshow.com. Thank you for listening. And don't forget to let your geek side show.